Hey guys, it's Chris. I'm actually back doing a video on my own channel. How crazy is this? Um, I have this opportunity because, not that I don't want to make a ton of videos, I have a ton of videos that I want to make, but today's video is something I'm really excited about for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, I get to do uh, a build and print video on the new Anycubic Predator that Anycubic was fantastic enough to send to me to make this video. Um, but it's actually my first Delta machine, so I'm really excited about doing that and all that good stuff. So I'm in the print shop today. This is where I'm gonna start shooting pretty much all my videos from now on because I feel like sitting at my desk in my office is really, really friggin' boring. So I'm in my comfy clothes. I have my cup of coffee right there and some prints that I did recently. And I'm excited. So let's go. Okay, so first I'm going to apologize because I still haven't got a new mic, so I have a mic, the shotgun on my camera way over there, but I don't have a crew or anything, I just have me. So, um, I, yeah, so I'm gonna get a new mic some point soon, so maybe I can actually wear something so there's not all this staticky whatever noise that you're probably hearing. Second, I vape. I don't know if you guys knew that, probably did, but in between edits, you may notice like a little cloud of something. Anyway, so um, I already unboxed the printer because unboxings are kind of boring and people don't really care. So what I will say is the package was fairly compact for this whole thing. It was 57 pounds um, and this is a big printer. So I was really impressed with the way it was packaged. Everything is was super snug, tight in there. And what I'm even more impressed about is all of the stuff that Anycubic sent. Not a lot of companies that I see recently send a ton of stuff that's extra. They just send the printer and the parts and that's it. Um, Anycubic sent tons of spare parts. Now, the first thing was they sent an entire full color manual where normally you just get like, a, hey, here's a PDF on the SD card. Print it out if you want. So this was nice. Um, not only did they send a full kilo of filament, but they sent a bunch of samples of just different colors, which I thought was nice. It's just a little extra add-in that most companies don't do. So I'm just gonna put these over here out of the way because we don't need them for right now. Uh, so this is the top of the Predator. This is the bottom of the Predator. It's upside down. Um, they also sent for spares, so let's just go spare parts. This is an extra set of rods, just in case. They sent five extra nozzles, an entire spare hot end. That, to me, was impressive. Um, also, let's see, what else did they send that was spares? I don't think any other spare stuff they did send. Um, you know, and this wasn't just something they sent to me. This is something that comes in every package. Uh, nozzle cleaning dr uh, needles, uh, a nice tool kit. This is the filament out sensor, all the screws to assemble. Not sure what these are yet. I'll find out eventually. Uh, a decent sized USB cable, uh, an SD card and a USB card reader. Gloves, this confused me, they sent gloves. It's not a resin printer, but okay. I'll take them, I have resin printers. Um, and actually, uh, a pretty decent print removal tool. So that was surprising. Spool holder. And uh, did I already say this is their uh, bed leveling sensor that gets attached? And let's see, well this is the hot end. Here. And... Here is their Titan style extruder. Mounted on the springs and everything. Now the, the tall support pieces that are all the axes are actually still in the box in front of this table. So I'll get to those when I get to them. So uh, also they just sent a little flyer they have so you can actually get a discount on stuff. 
and they sent this really nice after sales service card. So it's like a little warranty card. So I don't know, to me, I think it's just the little things that they did that I found really nice. So I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys don't care. I thought it was nice. So I'm gonna move a couple things around and start getting some stuff together and then we can start this build. Okay, I forgot to mention that at least one of my cast is probably gonna come join us at some point. He will, one of them will jump up on the table, probably Tyrion. Anyway, um, so I broke out the side rails and they are all the same, so it doesn't matter where they go. So, first easy step is you just take the top and you attach these to the top first. So it is an M4 driver, or four millimeter driver, on this massive bag of screws they sent. So, just take one rod, and I'm gonna leave the plastic on because it's keeping everything else in place there. And they have the stepper motor cables taped down nicely. So I just pull that tape off, grab that tape, decent length so you're not going to be super short on anything, just plug that in and then stick all of that in the box like this. And then we take these massive screws. And there's four on the top and four on the bottom on each side. Alright, now I'm going to do that two more times. I noticed on this one there's actually a colored dot and I just wanted to make sure that there was no difference. It does not say there is any difference in the instructions. So I'm gonna go with that and see if there's no difference. are in. Let's see what's next. So what you want to be careful of is just positioning. So right here, this is where the heated bed cable goes. So you want to make sure that you have everything lined up the right way. So that goes to the back right here. So now this is going to be the challenge or maybe not because, oh, look at that kind of fits. If it was actually lined up properly, which it's not. Here we go. Wow, that's nice and snug. It sits perfectly. And now I can see the screw holes. Even better.
And I'm just going to get one in on each side first so it's supported. I'm a little too short for this. I'm also a little concerned about where I'm going to put this in the workshop because it's really tall and all of my benches are bench height so it has a top mounted spool holder so I feel like it's going to uh, need a design of some sort to actually put a spool holder on there. And one more. This assembly is actually really easy. Even for short guys. I mean, I'm not that short, I'm 5'10", but this is a big machine. And that's it. Now we get to flip it over. Okay, now it's right side up. Excellent. Is it dark in here? It feels dark in here. I don't know. Anyway, um, so next up is going to be just running the bed cable. And I need a cutter that's locked in my toolbox. I'll just use these. Oh, hi Ty. I told you a cat would come visit. Hey, come here. No? You going? Okay, you're out. Okay, so, here's the cable.
He's still down there. He'll come up eventually. It just plugs right in up here. And now, while I paused to flip it over and I was looking through the book for a second, it actually said you may use a cover strip after you place this wire in here. And then I was looking through all the parts and I didn't see a cover strip. So then I looked harder and I found it. It's right here. So it's already in here. So you just run this right up through the channel like this. So it stays nice and out of the way. And then find a way to pull this out. Put it in here. And there you go. That's nice. It's nice that I, I find that they thought of a lot of these things and that to me, I like. So we're gonna use this little bag here, which I will tell you is, let's see what we got going on here. These are M3 16 millimeters. So basically these arms, here I'm gonna just pop that up out of the way for right now. All right, so these have these little, I don't even know what these are called, little grommety type things that go on the screws. And this looks like a two millimeter. Yep. And there's no particular side that they go on. They just go on. So I'm just gonna get two ready. One for each side here. This is the back, so you can see here on the bottom, so the part cooler is here, and this is this one here is the actual uh, heat sink cooler. So I'm gonna put that on. In here, facing this way. Just go through here, and these all these pivot. Again, this is my first Delta, so I'm excited. I've never actually run one ever. So the hot end's in place. Let's have some coffee and see what's next. It's upside down. That's what those are for. So these little screws that I didn't know what they were for, they are for the extruder. So you basically take the extruder, and these little screws hold the springs on, and they get screwed in right here. I'm just going to confirm exactly what I'm doing before I do it. That's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. So these look like point two, two point five, and they are. All right, excellent. So I'm gonna put it with the extruder facing out, and I'm 
going to start away from me. Right here. Because this is a spring, it's a little challenging to screw it in. But there we go. Good start. all afraid to let this hang but it's gonna like live on that thing so I shouldn't be okay so as I was putting them on I noticed that I put them on the wrong way like I told you to put them on so I just stopped and I put them on the right way so now the extruders facing in front and the next step is the filament sensor which is right here comes with the screws and it's got two holes right up in here behind this cable that you can't really see. There's actually a piece of Bowden tube right here that you feed the filament in from the top from this Bowden tube up here that you probably can't see. Anyway, so it's gonna go this way. Yep. And that's a two and a half. There's one. Filament sensors to me, I guess, my opinion is they're nice to have. If you don't have them, they're not the end of the world, but it is nice to have on a big printer. I've actually added a couple to some of my other bigger printers um, that didn't come with them, and I just used the Octoprint plugin. So it's nice when you're printing something that's giant and you know it's going to use more than a kilo of filament. It's nice to not have to worry that you know your print is going to pause and you can swap it when you can. So, all right, sensor is in. And uh, just for giggles, let's check it to make sure everything reaches. Boom tube. Up there, goes down, comes through. Yep, works, score. Where are we at? We're up, I love reading this book upside down, I'll tell you. That filament sensor is in. Wiring, here. And here. So it's my understanding that all of this stuff matches everything else. So the one that is not labeled is the stepper motor because it's kind of obvious that it's a stepper motor cable. And then we go here. So these are all labeled. So let me see if I can just kind of do this just a little bit. This thing's heavy though. So we've got level, so I'm gonna, that's gonna be the one that we leave out because that goes to the leveling sensor. This is T0. And hot end, which I'm guessing is this one, yep. zero. Fan two, maybe? Fan two. Fan zero. Can I just plug in fan zero? I thought it, oh, there's two. All right, and then that just leaves the leveling sensor cable open because you only really plug that in, where I put it? You only really plug that in when you're using it, otherwise it just sits there. All right, so that's done. 
And that's pretty much it, except for the power supply, which is up here through the grate. I'm not gonna spin it all the way around, but the power supply, just check and make sure it is not set properly right now. So I'm gonna just stick a screwdriver in there and flip it over to 110 or 115. All right, and that's it. Other than that, the spool holder, which I put right here, which I am probably gonna have to modify just for myself because I don't think it will fit. Because all my benches are this tall and my ceiling is, on, yeah, anyway. Over here, there's a cutout in the acrylic specifically for this. And it gets to the, I don't know if it's 2020, I guess it's 2020. And that just mounts right there like that. I think I might just make it. <laughs> so far, this has proven to be the most challenging part of building this. Right, and then this just goes in here. Thank you, height enhancement tool. All right, now they get to turn it on. Hold on. Okay, I've repositioned stuff a little bit because I want you to be able to see the screen, so I hope you can. The one thing I realized that I didn't do is I didn't plug in the filament sensor, so the cable is right here, and I am just going to see which way it fits that way and plug that in. All right, so now everything is plugged in except the leveling sensor, which is down here. That's not required right now. Oh, and then this Bowden tube needs to go in there. There we go. So now everything is attached. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably gonna swap this Bowden tube out. In fact, I'm going to swap that Bowden tube out with Capricorn tube, um, just because that's what I like. So I'm not gonna do that right now. So I already threw a spool of filament up top and I fed it through into the filament sensor. Now, let's turn it on. Oh, it sings. All right, looks like you can see the screen. Cool. All right, so we are gonna set them. Let's look at the book. See what the book says. All right. Book says install filament, did that. So this is a Titan style extruder. I just wanna see what the tension, whoa, hang on. Tension's good. Run that in, all the way down. All right, so it stopped because the hot end is not hot right now. So, Set up. I'm gonna hit temp. Nope. I'm gonna go back. This is a nice screen too. I'm, I'm. I don't know if I've said this yet, but I'm actually really impressed with this printer. I really enjoy it so far, anyway. Um, tools filament. Nope. It's not what the book says. So. Okay, I'm just gonna heat the nozzle up, so I'm gonna just go hang all back out. So, we'll go back to, no, no, not that. Um, so I'm gonna go to preheat, and then just hit preheat PLA and see what they're set at. So they're set at 190 and 50, that's okay, just for now. So we'll let that get hot. I'm actually very excited to try this Ultra Base too, because I hear it's great, I've never tried it. Now I can already feel the bed getting warm, so that's a bonus, so. Hang on, we'll let this heat up and we'll be right back. Okay, so that took about a minute to heat, which is nice. So now I'm gonna go to tools and hit filament and then say filament in and let it feed. So they clearly tested it with white. And it did say that the filament may load in fast, which is why you hear that kind of clicking. So I'm gonna hit stop because we don't need it anymore. This filament is in. 
Okay, so now that's done and now they want us to cool it down. So now we're gonna wait again. So I'm gonna hit cooling, done, okay. And then we'll go back home. And right now it's still really hot, so please hold, we'll be right back. Okay, I have zoomed back out because now it's cooled off and it didn't really take that long either. So now we are gonna do, uh, we're gonna set the Z offset. So we are gonna go to tools, uh, more, level, and then, I thought it said probe. Yep, tools, more, level, and then probe. And then it's gonna auto home, so I'm gonna hit okay. Hopefully, this doesn't do anything bad. All right, there's that. We have to just move the Z and keep going. Oh, this actually, oh, okay, I get it. So, okay, so if you can see here, this is Z up, Z down, and then when you tap this, it moves different increments. So I'm lowering it by 10 millimeters at a time. It doesn't go any higher than that. Once it gets close, probably there. I'm gonna go down and see where we're at here. We're pretty close, I can go a couple more millimeters. Now I'm gonna take a piece of paper and put it under and go down. Oh, there we go, it grabbed. So now I'm gonna go back to 0.1 millimeters and go up. That's too loose. That seems just about right. Maybe a little bit lower. Nope, too low. All right, I think that's the closest I'm gonna get. That still seems a little loose. Maybe not, yeah, a little bit, but we'll see. And then I'm gonna click Z0. So now it knows. So now it wants to start doing the auto bed leveling. So, we take this guy, and this is just magnetic, and there's this little block in front here, so that just goes right on there like that, and then you plug it in to the one port that you leave open. So now that's plugged in, and I'm gonna hit okay, and it's gonna start the probing. All right, this sounds really cool. So if you've never watched any of my videos on the, my channel here or on the 3D Printing Canada channel, you probably don't know that I name all of my printers after Autobots. So uh, this one is Mirage and it sounds like an Autobot. So that just delights me beyond, you have no idea. And while this is probing, I don't think I've actually mentioned the dimensions on this machine, so the print volume on this is actually 370 millimeters by 455. So that's pretty giant for a Delta. So it doesn't hurt my feelings that my first Delta is giant, because if you could see what was actually surrounding this, you would see all giant printers. And we're done. That didn't take long at all. So done. Remove the sensor. And I love that they have a nice quick release on these. And this is really nice and magnetic. Wow, there we go. Okay, so now remove the leveling sensor and choose level test G code to test. Okay then. So one thing I did off camera was I put in the SD card that it came with, which actually goes in right here. So, 
Let's see what happens. Here we go. Now it's gonna heat up again, but it'll only take a minute. So they've got the bed temp set to 55 for this print, and I don't know what the nozzle's set to. We'll find out. I'm gonna fast forward. So the test print is 55 on the bed and 200 on the nozzle. And the bed is already hot, and the nozzle is getting there. And we're off. Wow, so far so good. I probably should use a different color than black, huh? Anyway, I'm gonna let this run, and I'll fast forward it, speed it up, so you guys can watch it too. It looks like the nozzle could be a little bit tighter, but I guess I'll see when it's done. So the batteries in my camera died while I was shooting this, and I just happened to notice. So that was a good thing. Um, there is actually a way to baby step this. So if you need to do a fine tune, you can adjust it by 0 .0, by 0 0.4 millimeters. I didn't actually look at how. So you can go back to tools, more, level, Z offset. And now you can actually adjust this um, up or down to make it exactly where you need to be level. To be honest, for me personally, I use Octoprint on everything, so I can just terminal and get, tell it exactly where I want it to be after I look at it. I don't know how many layers this print is either, but it's on layer two, so let's see. Heart cooling still isn't on, but I don't know how they have that set. So I'm gonna go sit down at my desk, and you guys can enjoy watching this print, but I'm going to make it go super fast so it won't take long. Should this be freaking me out? It kind of is. I don't think it should be though. That's the springs and the, I don't know. Okay, so that got really boring for you guys. So I just stopped it. Um, anyway, so the level print is done and I'm going to bust out the print removal tool they sent and see what I got going on here. Kind of nice easy removal.
Yeah, it could be a little bit closer to the bed. So I will make that adjustment. But in general, it's pretty good. Ta-da. All right, stay tuned. I'm gonna pause you for a second while I do some stuff. Okay, I'm back. And it was longer than a minute. So I did some stuff and I made a few minor modifications. Like I said, I was probably going to anyway. So first thing um, I want to do actually is I want to give a quick shout out. Uh, there's a local company here that uh, heard that I was going to be doing this video and they offered up some of their PLA for me to use for testing and to do some prints with. So that was great that I didn't spend my own money on it. So um, I just want to give a shout out to filaments.ca. They, uh, they really hooked me up. I was expecting a couple kilos. They actually sent me a big box of filament, which I was really surprised with. So thank you for that, guys. Um, I got some of their uh, Econofil Neat, which I really enjoy. It's um, NatureWorks NGO 4032D, which I love. That's probably the plastic I prefer to print with the most. Um, sent me some 3D Fuel Pro PLA and some of their EcoTuff, which is like a, a virgin material. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, so I'm excited to try it. Anyway, so thank you. And uh, so changes that I did were just a couple of little things. One thing I said I was going to do is I said I was going to replace the Bowden tube with Capricorn tube. So I used Capricorn TL and I made it just about an inch, an inch and a half shorter than the original one, figuring that a little bit less Bowden tube, maybe slightly better accuracy. So we'll see about that. I don't think it matters either way, to be honest. Um, another thing that I did was, you know, I didn't mention uh, belt tensioning when I was building it and I didn't actually see anything, but then I thought about it and went, huh, I didn't tension these belts. So they're really easy. The belts run up in through the supports here. So what they are is the, the pulleys are, they live uh, right behind here on this plate. And then all you do is you loosen these two screws and then you turn this screw one way to tighten it, one way to loosen it so you get better tension. So now all the tension is the same. Ta-da! Um, and then the other thing I did was because of where this printer is going to live in my workshop, it's going to be in that corner over there on a bench. So reaching the spool holder is not going to be super convenient where it was. So what I did was uh, I actually took the acrylic plate off on the top, which is right here, and I'm going to put it back on. So all you have to do is just take the acrylic plate off and then I put it back on screwed this into place in front. So now this is way easier for me to get to. So I will put that plate back on, but I left it off so I could show you. And I don't know, I think that was about it. Oh, I did add uh, a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint because I do that with everything. Um, I have one of my little tablets here that I use to control it. Ta-da! The battery's almost dead though, because it's not plugged in. And I threw a webcam up over there just so I could kind of see what I was doing. But, so what I'm going to do now is, I don't know if I'm going to actually end this video here, depending on how long the edit is, and I may do a separate print video. So, it all depends. I don't want to make a super crazy long video, like the Raptor video. Um, but I don't want to publish a bunch of videos that don't need to be a bunch of separate videos either. So I'm going to play that by ear. But in the meantime, over the course of the next three or four days or five days or a week, whatever, I'm going to be using a lot of this filament and um, I'm printing some test models and then some nice models from some of my favorite designers. And uh, we'll sum it all up at the end. So hopefully... You guys will stay tuned for either the second half of this video or the part two of this video. So anyway, if I end it here, this is Chris from Versus 3D, and we'll see you in the next video. If I don't end it here, then just keep watching.